I can I can go back and say where it was. Okay, Deb, you should be able to see my desktop here. here. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna take my earphones out. Uh, uh, I'm getting a lot of feedback from the room, so uh, okay. hopefully I'll, I'll try to check in every now and then. Not distracted. Um, let me just do a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Evan. Work for APD Online. Uh, we're located down here in uh, Johnston, uh, Iowa, but uh, we do serve the entire city. And we have a set of services that we call AEA K-12 Online. It's on behalf of all the AEAs. And we're going to talk a little bit about the Moodle hosting today and the curriculum that's available for that. I uh, was invited just to, um, to, to kind of explain who we are and what we do and the resources that are available. These are all available for free for your schools because Keystone has um, has provided them. So it's it's a great deal, and I want to make sure that you're aware of them. Um, we you might know of our AAPD online. This is a, uh, our services here, kind of at a glance. We do offer online courses. Uh, we also offer online training, such as the mandatory reporting, bloodborne pathogens. We offer a series of webinars and other live events that we call AAPD Online Live. And we're in the process of creating online communities for teachers as well. And that uh, online community space is called the Agora. We're working with a lot of statewide groups on that. So that's all professional development. And then on the other side, we have services for schools that they can use to turn around and offer online or blended learning to their own students. And um, it, looking at those. We do offer free Moodle hosting as well as Moodle consultation. So if you are looking for a learning management system, uh, you might want to check out the Moodle system. We're going to look at that today. It is a very scalable option. Anything from one teacher up to your entire school can use it and we work on solutions there uh, from there as well. Um, if your district has its own Moodle server or is that something of interest for you, um, even though even though we offer the support, the maintenance, if you still want to have that on site, we can offer consultation. We can work with you. Uh, any questions that you have, I work with a, um, a group of about 20, actually probably up to about 25 tech coordinators right now who do have their own Moodle servers, who ask me questions. And oftentimes, if it's a common question, I'll do a reply all to the group. It's kind of like an informal listserv. So, um, so we serve as a as a point person for a lot of Moodle related questions. Uh, connected with that server, we have an e-curriculum catalog, and that's growing. We'll, we'll show you that and kind of explain how that works. We do offer what we call on-site services. This includes professional development. We'll also come and, and consult with your administrators to kind of explain what online learning is and, and what you need to put into place to make that happen. Um, and, and as we said, we do offer a, a whole range, uh, array of uh, different PD services for schools. And then coming out this fall, we have a new server coming out called a personalized learning system, and um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be one of its kind in the country. A lot of people ask, "What is that going to look like?" And I say, just as the training system offers self-paced instruction for faculty, we're creating a self-paced um, system for students to take part in that schools can use and leverage in a lot of different ways. Um, we're going to uh, roll it out this fall. It's going to be quite a bit more detailed than our current training system is. It'll have the ability for students to upload uh, files, create an on-site portfolio. Um, we'll have the ability to uh, put in assessments. Uh, schools can either create their own lessons within or use lessons from the statewide catalog and such. And again, it can be used in all types of different situations, whether it's in the class, whether you have a student that's doing uh, some uh, individualized um, um, uh, individualized plan, they were kind of learning on their own, their own personalized learning plan, if you want to use it for competency-based education, a lot of different things. We'll, uh, we'll have more information on that as it comes out um, over the summer and this, uh, and this fall. All right, let me uh, go to our Moodle server. Our Moodle server can be found at moodle.aeak12online.org. Once again, moodle.aeak12online.org. 
Um, we currently um, offer both local authentication as well as authentication to Google Live at EDU. Um, so if you, if you are Google App School, your students can use those credentials. Um, we do have um, several schools who use that. Some students will accidentally, let me uh, log out just so you can see what I'm looking at here. If they click log in, we do have the note, you know, if you're using one of these services, click here. Some will go ahead and try to put in their Google credentials um, below without reading. And so sometimes there's some confusion around that. But if you have Google credentials, you just click on there. Go ahead and log in one click. We are creating um, a, a statewide open auth solution that's actually going to connect to all of our, our servers so that if teachers have logins to the training system, that same information can be used on all of our Moodle systems as well. Once you've authenticated in, um, if you look down here, we, we have our uh, different AEAs listed. If you go under Keystone, uh, it's, um, these are districts that are using our server in one capacity or another. Um, and again, you can use it even if you just want a uh, sandbox, so to speak, where um, you just want a teacher just wants to try it out. No problem. You can come in and use it for that. It doesn't have to be with students. It certainly makes a lot of sense to try it out here on one that's functioning, and then you can see how things are going, then go through the process of creating your own local server just to try it out. Um, we have a lot of schools using this in a lot of different ways. Um, Alan McKee is uh, using it quite a bit, um, especially at the high school. We've got several teachers there. Um, I work with Chris quite a bit. And so she's got uh, courses here for Honors English class, uh, English 12, so you see she's also a Spanish teacher. And we do have individual units. I know that Dev Hankus and uh, Norma Tizzi have worked on creating some units in digital citizenship, cyberbullying. That's part of our e-curriculum catalog, so you don't have to use it as a full course. You can use it as a unit on, like in this case, cyberbullying and such. Uh, so just to let me go do a peek here and get an idea of hers. This is her full course she's put online, put a variety of different resources on there. If you haven't seen Moodle before, this is how it looks. Um, you have your uh, content in the middle. You can add in labels and such. You can upload very easily Word documents, PDFs, any type of file you would like. And it also has built in the ability for quizzes. This is an assignment right here. And it also has forums. And this is one that she's got. It's just a simple threaded discussion forum here that she uses for a book hook. Okay. Um, on the side in Moodle are different blocks, and there are <laughs> lots of different options for those. You can put in a calendar, uh, upcoming events. She's got a blog menu uh, for blogging in the classroom. She's also got a link out to a resource that she uses called Hippocampus. Um, and uh, you can also search forms. Lots of different uh, features there. One of the things, if you are a Moodle user, you might be looking at this, you might say, ooh, that looks different than our Moodle uh, system. And that is be, um, one of the th features we have in here is we've got a new plugin that is a course type, and this is um, called One Topic. It's a course format type. And uh, it's a free plugin that's available on the Moodle.org website. We've installed it on our servers, um, and it's very popular. It avoids what we call the scroll of death, which you're probably used to if you've used Moodle before. Uh, the standard format just puts all the content and all the units, and you just scroll down and down and down and down. Well, obviously, in this course, that would be a major pain, given that she's got you know almost 20 units. So by having this one topic with the tab feature, that makes things a lot easier. Also, you all, uh, if you have used Moodle before, you know we're on Moodle 2.0. Uh, this does look different than the Moodle 1.9 version. We're actually on Moodle 2.5.2 is the current version. We'll be going up to Moodle 2.6 this summer. Um, and that's, well, that's, that's getting up to being a stable build, so we'll be moving there. Uh, if you haven't seen Moodle 2 before, the, um, the um, dock over here where you can move blocks over on the side, that's a new feature as well. Okay. So, uh, going back, we have, again, a lot of teachers using it for that reason. We do also, let me go to a different school, let's go to Decora. Uh, we're working with Liz Fritz in Decora. She is using Moodle for professional development. So, for 
the uh, technology professional learning in this year. She's got um, that all organized there as well. And so that includes smart boards, flip learning, iPads, that type of thing as well. So it can be used in that regards. Um, even on a, uh, let me show you another power user at West Delaware, uh, Kevin Shookman. Uh, he, um, he, uh, he uses for a lot of his courses, but one thing I like about his is that he does not, um, he doesn't spend a whole lot of time building, because he has so many preps, and he's got a lot of things. Um, he does a lot of quick upload of re resources and such. I like to show new teachers this, so that they don't feel like it's going to, you know, that you could use it as an accompaniment to your face-to-face -face course without uh, truly blending in class. It's kind of a first step. So he's created really quickly um, some links to the resources he uses in class. He's uploaded some documents. And then he went and made a step two to his work and put in some discussion forums for, for participants. Um, all told, he does, he does his building pretty quickly. So it's, it is scalable in terms of going and, and taking that first step in. Um, a lot of people talk about some other LMSs, Edmodo, Schoology, um, uh, those type of things which have appeal, especially at the younger levels, for how they look and feel. One of the things we get, a lot of people when we survey for LMSs, they say Moodle is preferable for people who are power users and have a lot of things that they'd like to do, but for beginning users, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So one of the things we help with PD is simplifying Moodle and showing some examples of how teachers got started. All right. Um, I'm going to pause for a second, put my headphones back in. Um, Deb, any questions from the group, of, um, uh, from what we've seen so far before I continue on? Cool. Stop it. So I muted the screen, Evan, so I'm going to ask for questions from the group. Anybody have a question? So, Evan, if a teacher decides they want a Moodle course, um, how, how does that workflow go? Who do they contact? How does it get started? How, who do they know to go to and so on? Awesome. awesome. We're, uh, in, in line with line here. here. That's exactly what exactly I want to do. So. Take my head out and out. And show and you that you process. That we'll go back to the home page. Okay, I am going you to. You notice when we were in there, each, uh, each district has their own section, and we can create an, uh, you know, we can create a section at any time for your district, and we can set you as the administrator for that section, so that you can add courses or delete courses or arrange courses uh, anytime you'd like. Um, but you don't have to. We don't. Um, a lot of districts we work with, that's one thing the tech coordinator does not really want. They want to offload that. They might have admin access, but they don't want that responsibility, which is fine. We do all of that uh, ourselves. In fact, we have several things automated. I'll show you those. Um, one other thing, too, you saw the customized theming that we do. We'll do a customized theme uh, for your districts. They're usually pretty simple. We use your school logo and colors and, and put together a theme, but there's no, no cost for that as well. Um, so here's how it works. We said we were scalable. A teacher can come down here at any time. Uh, they do not need to, you know, uh, meet with administrators or have a big contract or anything like that. They can come down here and make a request. And so I'm going to say um, I want an English um, lit course. my name with it so that it's there. Say which uh, which uh, school I'm in or even if I'm not. I'm just going to say Keystone 88 right now. The enrollment key is the password that a teacher sets to a course so that um, uh, the other students don't accidentally come into it. You would allow only those with the enrollment key to enter in and then you can tell your students what that is. So I'll just say that for right now so you can get an idea. It's going to come in here. It's going to ask which AEA and which district I'm in. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and say Keystone AEA. I'll click Continue. And that's it. I've just requested a course. Now what will happen, and it usually takes a couple of minutes or so, I will get an email. Maybe now. Maybe now. 
I'll get an email with that notification in, and then, oh, actually that goes to my support email, not, uh, not to that one. Um, and then I will approve the, um, the uh, course. Um, it takes about, probably our turnaround time is usually about 20 minutes. So within 20 minutes, the individual will have their course. And again, that's something that they can do on their own. Um, some of our power users, like we said, we looked at a couple of our power users. What we'll do is, if they're using it for a lot of their courses, we'll set them up with their own folder and give them the ability to add their own courses in there as they go. And uh, that, um, you know, that makes things easier for them as well. Okay. So, going back here. Um, by the way, this course request manager, uh, it's a great feature. Like I said, I, I usually get an email, which, uh, but I'll show you this part here. If I click here, here is the request. I verify that it is indeed a teacher, and then I click Quick Improve, and voila, now if I go within Keystone AEA, my course is there, and it also assigns me as a teacher, which is pretty neat. Okay, so again, that's a, that's a pretty quick turnaround. Um, <coughs> and I get a notification that it's been approved too. Okay, so um, this, uh, if you have your own Moodle server, this course request manager is a free plugin that you can put onto it, and um, it's one thing that, uh, that you can use for that. Okay. Also, we have a teacher help desk area. Uh, teachers can submit questions here, and um, once we get the questions, we can, we've got a whole group of instructional designers who can go and answer those questions. So they have around the clock, uh, you know, around the clock support. We, we answer emails at night, on the weekends, um, and so those are things that you don't have to do. Again, as uh, you or somebody else from your district can have administrative access and can go in and monitor things and uh, can upload things if you'd like, but uh, you don't have to. Okay. So um, in, ad in addition to the, uh, the ease by which teachers can request courses, uh, in addition to the scalability for your, you know, you can have admin access, you can just let teachers go in on their own and the support that we offer. The other big perk with this is that we, uh, we have several embedded resources within here. So this is a list of ongoing resources that we've got that people can use and put into their courses. I mentioned Hippocampus. Hippocampus is um, from NROC, the National Repository of Online Content. And it has a lot of content here, that, a lot of um, uh, online self-paced lessons that can easily be linked to or even embedded within your course. Of course, we have the Iowa AE online resources but, um, uh, that you're familiar with, lots of OER common stuff, uh, FED simulations, one of which is uh, SoftChalk. Um, SoftChalk is a resource that AAPD Online provides, and it creates online uh, lessons. If you click here. Um, this course is, uh, you can go and you can download it. Normally SoftChalk is $600, but it is free for all of Iowa educators, so it's a, it's a great deal um, for, for you. And as I said, it does create SCORM compliant lessons that you can upload or embed within Moodle. Uh, to give you an idea of what that looks like, we have several tutorials and lessons. This is a sampler of some of the different things it can do. Um, uh, it goes and creates the template, the, the, the uh, CSS um, for this all yourself. You need to have the ability to basically operate Google Docs or Microsoft Word type, type of capabilities, type in text, um, a limited WYSIWYG editor. But then you can go in and add in very easily all these other features with it. So images and links, sure. Um, and you got video as well and audio. Um, but then you have things like uh, sidebars where you can click on here and it scrolls down to that automatically. You've also got plugins like um, other uses for sidebars as well. But you've got things like hypertext where you can click on something like this and it'll pop up. Um, you've got things such as um, quiz poppers. These are uh, selected response questions that appear within a lesson. a hint if you'd like. And then there are lots of different activity types that you can put into. Some are more valuable than others, but like interactive charts, 
Um, a crossword puzzle. Else to like crosswords. But even things like uh, did you know type of activities. I like this one. What's the largest amount of change you can have without having change for a dollar? If you don't want to know the answer, look away because I'm clicking on it. There it is, dollar nineteen. So those type of activities are very easy to put in, and they add in a lot of interaction to online lessons that um, that people who've kind of practice Moodle a little bit really appreciate because it gives their curriculum a lot more vitality. Again, part of our Moodle series. And one of the things that you have to realize is that um, when teachers are using Moodle, um, they uh, on our system, they actually have the ability to collaborate with other Moodle users on there. Um, if you scroll down beyond those resources, you come to our e-curriculum catalog, and these are the actual courses that we've got that either we have developed, we've purchased, or teachers across the state have developed uh, that are available for teachers to use. So, for example, if I'm a brand new teacher and I want to get started and I want to do an, have an English language arts course, I could search here. I can find a course. This happens to be one we purchased from Florida Virtual Schools. But if I click on the preview, for example, uh, it'll take me to the course. I can look through that. Um, I can also then grab the content and then use it on our server. Um, or if I'd like, I could also go here onto the course itself. And then I can grab individual items from the course through an item called the sharing cart. So let's say this particular lesson, our introduction to Moodle is the one I want. I can click here to add it to the sharing cart. It's now been added. This is the personal feature that we have. So then I can take that back to my own course, and then I can basically paste these from my sharing cart into my own course. So you can either take the full course or you can take individual items out of things. So it's kind of like shopping for e-curriculum or without a credit card. So. Um, one of the things we've got right now is we've just finished our first semester. Actually, we're, we're, well, we're well into our second semester now. We just started this service last summer, and it's really taken off. We have many, many users across the state. And one of the things we're doing is we're asking teachers, hey, you know, you use this. Would you be willing to share that course that you developed with other teachers? And, you know, it's buyer beware. It's not to say that it's going to be the perfect course, but... If you're a new teacher, it's great to see what someone else is doing and to start with some things rather than having to start from scratch. That's one of the biggest barriers to Moodle is the start from scratch syndrome. Um, for example, we've got about 14, I think it's 14 people teaching Spanish 1 on our site. And what we've done is we've uh, asked a lot of those teachers, would you be willing to share your course? And a lot of them say, you know, have said yes. I think we've had nine have said yes. I haven't done so quite yet, but in the few, next few weeks, hopefully in the spring break coming up, I've got some time. We'll be taking those courses and I'm making them appear here. So while we've only got, I think, uh, about 40-some selections right now, it'll be up to about 100-some selections here within a week or so. That's, and that's how many courses we've got from teachers. And this will continue to grow. You know, Teachers will be able to learn from other teachers. So it's a great resource. Um, it's available for your teachers today, if they would like, uh, to get to this uh, spot within the area. It is not open to students. You have to have teacher access. You can get so one of two ways. Either you can request your own course and then we also um, um, approve you as having teacher access or you can request permission here. A um, couple other items before I open up for questions. One other thing that we've got um, on the course, uh, on the, the uh, system, is we do have our Molly blended learning course right here. This is a professional development course that we offer on our catalog. We could also offer it for a site-based version. It is a course available for uh, license renewal or Drake uh, graduate credit. And um, it helps introduce teachers to blended learning and how to create blended learning within their classroom. Uh, we talk back about blended content, blended assessments, blended collaboration. And in the part, uh, um, uh, in the process of doing so, uh, teachers go and create a blended unit. And so you know, we had several teachers who went through uh, this past time. And uh, this is a math teacher, for example, from Forest City. And we had a Spanish teacher here from 
uh, Prairie City, Monroe. These units then, when they make them for the course, we take and we move over to their own section. So, that, so they're not just creating something and not using it, they have it available. Um, so it's a great, uh, it's a great course, great resource. We do have a train the trainer uh, going on. We have a section on our catalog that just started on Wednesday. Um, so I guess it wouldn't be too late to start that one, but we do offer them on a regular basis. So um, something else to to uh, to know about. We also offer a um, a series of courses called Ali, which is this was Molly, which was more online learning for Iowa educators. And Ali is online learning for Iowa educators, and um, this is our assessment course, how to assess online. We have a course on online technology, which is a great intro to Moodle course as well. So lots of PD. It's connected with the server, so people are um, on the server working with it and then um, building content that they would then turn around and use with their students. So that's the last item I wanted to share with you about the server and I'm going to go ahead and plug in my headphones again so and uh, Deb will open up for questions that you can ask. Questions anyone? Not so many questions here. It's because you did such a good job, Evan. No, it's not. <laughs> one, one item I have to say, 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 say why would we, we have our own local one, one versus, versus a statewide state one? one. And, yeah. and really, the, really the, biggest, the, biggest, uh, uh, the biggest benefit for it would be if you do con connect your own Moodle server with a student information system. Now that is not easy to do. We're limited because we're serving all the districts in the state. We cannot connect with multiple student information systems. It's just a limitation of what we can do. Um, there are a lot of districts that have said, oh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to connect ours with a student information system. And so they've elected to do it on their own. Um, what we found is that's not very easy to do. Um, we are in the process of becoming, I don't know, certified is the right word, but becoming trained on how to connect student information systems with um, Infinite Campus, um, and we're also looking to PowerSchool. Those are the two we're looking into. Um, JMC would be our third one. Um, JMC is going to be a little bit tougher for us to work with. Um, so if that is something that you want to, um, that you're interested in. Um, we can help with uh, with consultation down the road on that. You, we will also though help you, and if you want to get teachers ready and going today, but then want to move your content off our server to your own local, we'll help you with that too. Um, this is just a service; it's a take it or leave it. We want to help you in any way possible, um, getting into online learning. So, um, if there are things that you'd like to do on a local level, um, just contact me, um, and uh, we'll we'll help you figure out what that is. Okay. Um, and if there's nothing else, I'm going to sign question. off. Question? Evan. So the question is, um, all of the courses that you showed that teachers have created and the NROC things, if schools have their own little servers, um, what, how does that work? If they have their own little server, server, the e curriculum catalog still, still can work in, work in most, most cases. cases. Uh, we have yeah. it uh, restricted in some cases when there is a course that we purchased. So Florida Virtual Schools, for example, the way the license works for that, you, uh, you have a limited access on one server, but you cannot go and put it onto multiple servers. If they allow that, then they have no control over their, their license. So um, we do not allow people to take copies of that and put it onto their own server. Same with NROC. That, that's another, another example. Um, so if there's a course that you want um, that uh, it's NROC or Florida Virtual Schools, you always have the option of using our server uh, for that one course. Any of our other ones, though, the e-curriculum catalog, um, I, I showed you um, my permission level will let me see things that uh, yours might not. Let's go into uh, let's go to this honors English 11 course. This one created by Bev Burns here, so um, local one. You can go and preview it. This 
file, this MBZ file, is the zip file for that course. So you could download that course and then put it on into your own server. And we can help you with that process as well. So uh, for e-curriculum that, um, that is teacher-generated or that we generate, you don't have to run it on our server. It will be up to the most recent version. So if you're running version 1.9 or even an old version of 2.0, uh, these sections, these courses won't work on them. They'll have to run them to five, so that would be another uh, potential issue. But you'd have the permission to use those. Um, and one thing also, we'd love to work with you if you do have your own server and you'd be willing to share content. Um, we are willing to do the grunt work to take those um, uh, uh, copies of those courses and put them on to our curriculum catalog as well so they can be shared with others. I have my uh, headphones in. I, I paused and I had them out when that question was asked originally. So, anything else? Anything else? Any additional questions for Evan? So, Evan, any quick last remarks? And then I, I'll probably stop the broadcast in a few minutes, um, and I'll make sure to send you the link so that you have access if you want to edit or do whatever you want to do with it. Uh, email uh, is e a b e a a e y at a a b dot dot org, and we are Miss Blaze Price right now. I would give you my phone number at a warehouse, warehouse. so, so uh, you'll have to email me. Otherwise, thank you guys again for your time, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Thank <music> you.